Hi, this is Liara Poilich from Phoenix FM 106.7 and today we're going to be interviewing Linda Walsh from Teen Talk. Linda, why did you make the show Teen Talk? Okay, well I have worked for many years um, with children um, in my clinical work and also I had some Um, concerns with my own daughter also and I noticed that in these generations young people they're having a lot of the same issues but I think they're having um, more issues simply because of technology, uh, climate change, um, lots of different changes happening in our world and I think they're starting to develop problems um, at an earlier age Um, like mental health problems and they might have allergies and uh, you know they might have um, problems at home or learning difficulties and I thought um, these young people are struggling and I thought well my own daughter was um, 12 at the time and she lived with me up until she was about 10 years old and then she went to live with her father and uh, you know she changed schools and uh, she changed um, d- different family environment. Uh, they were they're on the um, on the western side of town, so different environment, different school, different people, different friends, all that. And I think that was a bit traumatic for her. And she had a, a bit of a nervous breakdown at twelve. Um, they're not really sure what triggered it, and she uh, ended up at the uh, at the hospital in the mental health department. And this was really a shock to me because I never saw it coming. Um, and she, she never led on to me and her father and her stepmother never said anything to me. So I wasn't aware. So I was in a bit of shock. And then I noticed there's a lot of other young people having problems earlier on and struggling with different things in their lives. So I thought, someone's got to do something. And I thought, well, let's try to change the system. Let's try to provoke change and questioning and make the system better so we can help these people earlier and we can find different ways of helping them and and find solutions. So instead of creating the problems, let's make the solution, as they say. How did you get into TV production and why did you decide to produce? I was having these nightmares just waking up in the middle of the night saying, oh my God, you know, the hospital, you know, like a dream, like the hospital's calling me, you know, uh, your daughter's in hospital and she's, you know, something's terrible's happened to her or whatever. Anyway, I often had these nightmares. One night I woke up in February 2014, like about in early morning, three, four o'clock, and I just wrote this idea. I said, how, what, how can I help her? And I said, look, You know, maybe these teenagers, they just need to talk about stuff and get it out there and then we can help them. We can know what what they're going through and we can help and provoke change, stimulate change in the system, in the environment and get them help and things like that. So I thought she was very shy, my daughter, and I thought maybe she's keeping everything inside. So I said, I woke up screaming, oh, please, teen talk. And then I got on the computer and I wrote a little paragraph about this idea. And I thought, oh, jeepers, I haven't got time to write a book. You know, um, I haven't got time to, because I'm working, I'm doing different stuff about my story. So I thought maybe to get things out there fast, like it needs to be on radio or television or something like that. So then I wrote like a synopsis for the show. Then I went back to bed because I had to get up for work in the morning. And then I sent it into Channel 31. I said, I have this idea for a show. And they said to me, um, do it, make a pilot. And I thought to myself, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Because I'm not from the television industry. So then I organized um, a whole lot of people uh, and I started pre- preparing to make this pilot. It took me a year from um, February 2014 to October 2014 I just did preparation I tried to get producers to help me and I tried to get people to help me but they all said they were busy 
So in the end, I said to myself, I waited for this producer for like four months um, and they just said they were really busy. They, could, they had other priorities. So I said, look, I just have to do it myself. So um, January 2015, I made the pilot in the holidays and then the station said that they would accept it for airing and it went to air in uh, June 2015. Is it difficult to produce a TV show? I would say it's, it's, it's very difficult, especially because I didn't know much about producing when I started. Like I've been doing it for two years now, so I'm a bit better and I've learned a lot of things. But I'm telling you, if you don't love this industry, you wouldn't do it because it's not regular um, and it's very unpredictable sometimes. It's very hard to get people organised. Um, I'm sometimes, you know, doing this like 24-7, you know, sometimes even at my own work, I'm answering emails for Teen Talk and it just, it, it absorbs nearly all my spare time, all my spare energy and all my spare money, okay? I call it the hobby nightmare now. So if I wasn't passionate about it, I don't think I would have got this far, to be honest. When you are casting talent, what characteristics are you looking for? Um, I'm not looking for any particular characteristics. Every, everyone is welcome, like anybody from the age, you know, even if they're a little bit younger, if they're eight, I think younger than that, they're a little bit nervous or if they're a little bit older. If they feel they have something important to say or if they feel that they want to help other young people by talking about their feelings and experiences. Also, if they want to showcase good things like their talents, like you being on the radio or like to inspire young people to... Uh, distract into positive things instead of negative things. Maybe they choose me, but I think the criteria is more if they're keen and if they want to be on the show, then they're welcome. I don't want people to come who are just sort of doing it half-heartedly or who don't believe in the show. I think people who come on the show should believe in the show. How difficult is it to interview so many different people? Um, it's not difficult. I actually enjoy it because it's very interesting and they're all from different cultures and they all have different experiences and the only sometimes uh, occasionally little bits and pieces come out <laughs> unexpectedly and you can't sort of put them back in but you don't know that at the time because you don't know that person's life and uh, all I can suggest to them is that, that we can edit it out or um, if there's anything that they want to redo or something like that. But usually um, everybody is very happy with their interview and, and sometimes I get a bit disheartened and think, you know, what, what is, it, is what I'm doing really worthwhile? And then people, you know, mums come up to me sometimes and they say to me, we think what you're doing is really good and you should keep doing it. And that gives me encouragement to continue some days when I feel a bit down. Or... Do you think your show makes a difference to young people? I think it does. I think the, f the feedback that I get is more positive than negative. You know, occasionally I get, you know, people who have different opinions and, um, for example, I had one young girl, she emailed me and she said, I won't come on your show because um, I think you're stereotyping young people. And she said, oh, your logo, because it's got the pink and the blue umbrellas. And I replied to her and I said, it's, it, it's just a symbol to mean boys and girls. It's doesn't, not gender specific. Do you know what I mean? Like be, mm. they can be any, um, you know, uh, they can be gay, they can be lesbian, they can be whatever they like. It's the pink and the blue is just a symbol for boys and girls or young men and young women. Just like you have that symbol with the person with the stick figure and uh, so then she was okay about that. But generally people are very supportive and usually the mums say, um, and I've interviewed people sometimes after six months and sometimes they've got, you know, roles in shows or, you know, they've improved their confidence or they've got jobs or um, I think it's just good for their, their self-esteem and for their confidence as well. And also sometimes they've said to me that they saw somebody else on the show and they had a similar experience to them and they got an idea how to solve their problem. So I think it does help. What is your best 
special message to young people? My special message to young people is I think if you, if you have a passion in life and you want to make the world better and uh, I, I have a strong feeling that, you know, I feel that young children or, you know, even you know, young adults and elderly people are very vulnerable in our society as well as disabled people. And I think we need to look after these people and um, because they're our future. And, you know, these people are going to live, well, the elderly, we don't know how long they're going to live, but they all need care and nurturing and they can offer us a lot um, for all our futures. The elderly can teach us things, the young people are going to be our future, and disabled people these days are going to live a long time. So if everybody can improve and get better and be more functioning, it's going to be better for everyone. So I would say just if you have a passion um, and... It's for a good cause um, and it, it's driving you, then you should keep doing it regardless. I mean, unless you get you know, sick of it or you decide that it's, um, uh, you know, it's a bit tough on your, on your private life or whatever. But I would say try to, to stick to your goals. Do you think you might make a film one day? Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> well it's, it did cross my mind. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I was hoping to get a good ending um, to the story with my daughter because my daughter's now 17 and um, I hope she's improving and getting better. Um, but it's been, a long, it's been a long process and uh, she'll be 18 next year, so she'll be a young adult. So I was, I was waiting for a good ending to the story um, like to say that she's recovered and she's a graphic artist because she loves art and she's doing what she wants and and then I thought I might sort of semi-retire and, and write and write my story about um, everything that happened like from when she was born and everything like that and they may maybe turn that into a movie because that's how I got inspired to make the teen talk. When can people watch your show and on what channel? Um, our show, in the beginning when it first started. When can people watch your show and on what channel? Um, our show, in the beginning when it first started, we, we started on Fridays at 4.30 and then they kept um, uh, changing it to 4 o'clock because there was another show um, that had our time. But it ended up that now I've decided that we should keep the same time all the time. So it's Fridays at 4 o'clock on Channel 31 and on Tuesday mornings at 7.30. Um, and it's also on Foxtel. It started on Foxtel this year in June. And that started from the beginning. So it means it'll be shown again about six months later. So even your interview will be shown about six months later. So Foxtel uh, Aurora Channel uh, 183. Uh, Thursdays at five o'clock in the afternoon and Fridays at four o'clock in the morning. Thank you for your time and for doing an interview for the Dramatic Duo Show. Okay.